Expert twin OBGYNs are back and busting medical myths. Dr. J and Dr. I. Here are Val Warner and Ryan Cheverini on season nine of Windy City Live. Hi, hey, we gotta take a break, but uh, will swearing help you cope with pain? We will find out in Fact or Fiction with our twin OBGYNs, Dr. J and Dr. I. And OBGYNs from right here in Chicago, and they're back to play a little fact or fiction with us. So let's hear it for Dr. J and Dr. I. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Hello. All right, I don't want to waste any time because we always have so much good stuff to get to. Let's get right to it. Here we go. Number one, 80% of American mothers share breast milk with each other, and that's just as safe as using milk banks. Mm. Is that fact or fiction, audience? 80% of American mothers share breast milk with each other, and that's just as safe as using milk bath. That is a fiction. I'm going to say 80% might be right, but it can't be as safe as using milk banks. So I'm going to say fiction. I don't even think that part's so right. Th that is actually fiction. It is fiction. Okay. So this is the thing. So no, 80% of women do not share milk, but people do share milk, okay? And so this is the thing. So breast milk has a lot of good benefits. You know, it's yes. got antibodies, prevents illness, prevents, you know, allergies, cancer, down the line, things like that. So, and there's some women that can't breastfeed. So there is a place for breast milk banks, but if you're gonna use breast milk from somebody, you wanna make sure it's from a registered, recognized bank because breast milk has things like HIV, you know, hepatitis, things like that. So yes, people are sharing breast milk, not 80%, but people are, and we always tell them, go to a recognized breast milk bank, and if you're curious where to find one, you go to the, <laughs> there's a place for it, the Human Milk Banking Association of America. That's where you find your breast Human milk Human Milk? Human Milk Banking Association of America. Okay. So don't just share breast milk with your neighbor, like, get it from a recognized bank. Right. <laughs> hey, doctor, Do you, doctor, cutting down on those, uh, those street deals, Dealers, this yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Big. No, but do you get, you can make a lot of money from selling your breast milk like this? I don't know if you make a lot. I think people do it more for so the, just you know, for healthy just for the, the cause. Yeah, I don't okay. know what you make, but yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's good to know. I was looking for side gig. Okay. Yes. <laughs> side hustle nation. Yeah, All right. Number two is perfectly fine to have sex when dealing with a yeast infection. Oh. Uh, I'm saying is, fiction. Yeah. This is, well. It's perfectly, I think it's a fiction. Nobody's owning that one, right? It's perfectly fine to have sex there's during a yeast infection. Oh, I see some bats over there. Said nobody <laughs> ever. No, 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 it's not fine. So, I mean, this is the deal. When you have a yeast infection, number one, there's inflammation. Constant friction across inflammation doesn't feel good, right? And so be a considerate lover. Don't do that, number one. <laughs> Number two, yeast infections are contagious, right? Yeah. And so people think now, they think, well, okay, it's contagious, use a condom. Number three, a lot of the creams that you use to treat yeast infections are based in oils that break condoms down. So A, you may get the yeast infection, and B, you may get a baby on top of it, and I don't know which one is worse. But so, you don't want to <laughs> what's, the, what's the time frame when you're dealing with a yeast infection for you to stay away from your lover? Probably we'd say a week. I mean, some medications work quickly. There's some that will knock it out in one day, others three to five, so a week to be on the safe side. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Give it up for yeah. one week. I'm, I'm glad. And it's, uh, yeah. I mean, it's lunch hour for a lot of people, too, right now. I just want you to know. One All week right. is not going to kill anyone. One week won't. All right, here we go. Number three, don't freak out, but a certain amount of poop, bugs, and rodent hair is allowed in the foods we eat each day. Oh. Depends on who's cooking, right? Yes. <laughs> this is so disgusting, but I bet you it's fact. I, it's disgusting. Okay, poop, bug, and rodent hair? Is allowed? I'm going with fiction. I was going to say, clearly the producers have been to my sister-in-law's house. Yes, but yes. <laughs> this is actually a fact. This is, uh, this is a fact. This is a, yeah. it's a fact. It is a fact. So let, think yeah. about it. We live in a microscopic world, right? I mean, there, there's like dust, there are mice, there are insects, there's bacteria. There's all kinds of stuff that we can't see, you know? And so the FDA recognizes that. They recognize there's no way you're going to get all that stuff out of your food. However, however, they said, okay, listen, there's a certain amount that is safe, but beyond that, it's not safe. And so you can actually go to their website. If you go to FDA.gov, they will tell you. But for example, for example, you can have 10 grams of animal poop and up to a pound of coffee beans. That is acceptable. Who, that is acceptable. Who tests this, Doc? Like, hey, what's what's the subject? Like, here's what we're going to do today. Thank only, you for signing up for the $100. <laughs> I don't know who tests it. I guess the FDA tested it, but yes. You but can they can't, you just said they can't even see it, so how do they even know? That's a good question. I don't know. There's probably testing you can do for that. that yeah, ask a question I can't ask. I don't know. Yeah, like, I stumped the doctor. Yeah, uh, All right, here, let's move on. I don't want to talk about poop no more. Okay, uh, now this one I do want to talk about. Swearing will help you cope with pain and help you get more out of your workouts. This has got to be fact. This is a fact, and Val has never felt pain in her life if this is true. That, 
It is a, in fact, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Put an M before that. There you go. Or a T on the end, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's a fact. So basically, when we curse, our brains are hardwired to think that we're in stress, which normally are if we're cursing, right? <laughs> and so our fight or flight reaction kicks in, adrenaline rises, blood pressure rises, blood sugar rises, and then our pupils dilate, and then what happens is we cannot perceive pain. And the reason is if you're fighting, obviously you don't necessarily need to feel all of those blows because you're gonna recoil and not focus on the fighting. And if you need to run, you don't need to feel pain either. So literally, if you curse, you tend not to feel pain as, as severely, and you may not even feel it at all. But then that's, you know, you hear about these people who get shot, and then they run three blocks, and then they turn around, and they go like, oh, and they yeah, drop dead, yeah, yeah. right? It's because it only lasts for a certain amount of time. And then once it wears off, you feel the pain. But what if you keep cursing? Well, now you know what? That's what I was going to say. Yeah, don't hey, stop. Hey, then, then your name is Samuel L. Jackson, and you make a lot of money. And you never feel pain ever. <laughs> Wow, okay. Uh, we got to go to... I want to cuss so bad. I better not. I'm flirt. The bosses are in my ear. Don't do it. Okay, good to see you both. We had a damn good time. Yeah, right. For more on Dr. J and Dr. I, check out their medical blog, Twin Doctors TV. And if you have a question for the docs, just send us an email to wcl at windycitylive.com.